In this video, I'm going to show you how to build a computer inside of the Ragitech Ponos TG case. So before we get started, let's go over every single piece that's going to be inside of this build. To start off with, we have 32 gigs of Patriot Viper RAM. Then we have the Core i7-8700K processor, along with the Western Digital Black 512 gig M.2 PCIe NVMe SSD, Samsung Evo 850 500 gig SSD, Samsung 860 QVO 1TB SSD. We have the EVGA Z370 FTW motherboard. Then we have the Cooler Master Silent Pro Gold 1200 watt power supply, along with the Corsair H115i Pro liquid cooling unit, and the EVGA GeForce RTX 2080 XC Ultra gaming card. All right, so let's get started. The base of the system is going to be the motherboard. So to get started, we're going to go ahead and first install the CPU onto the CPU socket. This arm, we're going to go ahead and push it down slightly, pull it out, and then lift up. That's going to go ahead and release the tray. So we'll just lift that there and then just slide it up. Okay, now that we have the tray opened up, it's going to expose these pins right over here. Make sure you do not touch them. Bending one of those pins will, for the most part, render the board useless. And there's a very high chance that EVGA or any other motherboard vendor will not take the motherboard back with bent pins. So now we're going to go ahead and grab the Intel Core i7-8700K processor. And you're going to notice there's a notch right here that same notch is going to be right over here as well. You're going to want to match up that notch right over here and this notch over here with the notch on the CPU or the notches. So at this point, we'll just drop it carefully right into place. And then maybe for good measures, just move it around a little bit, letting you know that it is in place. Now we'll go ahead and drop this tray. And these two lips are going to slide underneath this bolt here. So we'll go ahead and just slide this down. And the same way we did before, we'll just do it in reverse. Push this down, slide it out. That's going to go ahead and put it under this little ledge right over here. Pull it out, push down a little bit more and push it in. And that locks that CPU into place. Okay, so coming out from there, we're going to go ahead and install the RAM. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and install DDR4 RAM onto this motherboard. Now, you'll notice there is a notch right over here on the RAM, which will coincide on the notch right over here on the motherboard. And on the Z370 chipset, some other boards might be different. DIMM number 2 and number 4 are the slots where you're going to be installing the RAM onto. If you install it on 1 and 3 or 1 and 2, you run the risk of the system not posting. Okay, so first off, we're gonna go ahead and just pull this locking mechanism out on number two and do the same on number four. So if we were to try and install the RAM like this, we're going to get a seesawing effect because we did not match up the notches. So flipping the RAM around, anchoring it on the left side, and then just dropping it into place we're going to click first on the left and then click first on the right. Then you'll notice this locking mechanism just click right into place. All right, now we've installed one stick. Now we're going to go ahead and install the second stick. Again, anchoring it on the left, sliding it down, clicking on the left, now clicking on the right. Okay, you're going to push down relatively easily. Don't push down too hard. Now let's move on to the next one. Now we're going to go ahead and install the Western Digital Black M.2 NVMe PCIe SSD. So we're going to go ahead and install it on the second M.2 slot. This one is directly underneath the video card, so it might get a little hot. So, and right over here, we already have a thermal pad. So let's zoom in real quick. 
Okay, so now that we're here, we're first going to be removing this M.2 screw right over here. Thankfully, this is a magnetized screwdriver, so it comes off very easily. So just turning it around so you can see the entire thing. Okay, another little notch right over here will match up with this notch right over here. So here we just slide that right into, sp into the spot. You'll feel a little resistance. You push in very lightly and then simply push that down and now we're gonna go ahead and let me turn this around for you. Now we're gonna go ahead and just screw that screw right back in. All right, and that's it. We've installed an M.2 drive. Now let's go ahead and install the liquid cooling unit. For the liquid cooling unit, first off, we're going to be installing the back plate onto the back of the motherboard. So for this, we're just going to need to flip the board over. And then you'll notice there's a little opening right over here. That little opening is gonna go over this screw right over here. So we'll just lay it down right over here. And at the same time, you see these four screw holes. They're going to line up with these holes right over here on the motherboard for this particular socket, the 1151. We'll just drop it right into place. And now just go ahead and match up all four of those screw holes. Just pop them through the screw holes on the board. Now, with one finger on the frame, we're gonna go ahead and just flip it over, then slide the board into place, just to make sure that we don't lose these screw holes. Turn it around so you can see it a little bit better. Okay, great. Okay, so the method's going to be different on every single liquid or air cooling unit you install, but for this particular one, we're gonna be installing these little pegs into those four screw holes. So let me bring you in a little bit closer. Now, we're not going to need a special tool for this. We're just gonna go ahead, screw these in. Okay, now you're not gonna be screwing them in incredibly tightly, just with enough pressure from your fingertips. Okay, and then for the liquid cooling, we're gonna be using the Arctic Silver MX4. Now everybody has their own method. The method I've used forever as a product development engineer is to, right in the very center, we're gonna drop about a pea size right in the middle. Okay, and then just pull it back a little bit. That way all the excess just comes right out. And make sure to quickly put the cap back on. You don't want to waste any of this paste. All right, now you can see the application right there. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and mount this into place. I'll bring it right up here. Now we're just going to go ahead and drop this right into place over the screws right here. And then once it's in place, we're gonna go ahead and just push down for a few seconds to let that thermal paste spread evenly. And that's kinda gonna kinda keep it pasted there. And now we're gonna go ahead and use these guys. This is going to go ahead and retain that cold plate on there. Now make sure when you screw it down, don't screw it down all the way. Initially, what we're going to do is just catch the threading to keep this in place. And then we're gonna go ahead, screw it in here, 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 and up here. All right, so first off, we'll start off right over here. Okay, and again, we're not screwing it in all the way. And then again, in a crisscross pattern. All right, now that we have all four in, now we can begin just tightening them up with our fingertips. And we'll tighten up them the same way, crisscross pattern. Then we'll grab our screwdriver and just tighten it all the way down. All right, so now we have all the base components installed onto the motherboard. So let's go ahead and install the motherboard and the liquid cooling unit inside of the case. 
Now before we install the motherboard into the case, one thing you're definitely going to want to make sure you do before that is install the I.O. shield. Myself included as well as many other people forget to do this and then when you're all done you realize you haven't installed it. Then you got to tear everything out and put it back in so let me help you there. <laughs> so this is going to be on the back, it's going to be right here. It's going to be where you plug in all your USB ports and maybe your audio ports, display ports, HDMI, if you're using onboard video or of course down here. But so what we're going to do is, you'll notice on the side here, there's little pins. Those are going to go ahead and snap here into here, the flat part of the case. So when you line it up here properly, they're going to click into place. It's hard sometimes and on some IO shields, it's a little bit easier. So we'll just push it in lightly. Don't push in the middle because then it's going to bulge out. All right, so that one went a little easy. So now turning it around, you can see it back here inside of the case. So let's go ahead and put the motherboard in. Okay, before you install the motherboard, you'll notice these gold little standoffs. Okay, there's nine installed in the system right now. This is going to be what keeps the motherboard from touching the back of the system tray. Okay, so what we're going to do is verify on your motherboard, count how many screw holes there are for example, right over here or right over here. Count how many there are on the motherboard. Okay, and then compare it to however many standoffs you see in your case. Now, if you have an extra, let's say this board has nine, but there was 10 installed, you want to hold up the motherboard onto your tray and verify which is the one you don't need. So I know this particular motherboard and there is one missing. Now, mind you, it won't cause any issues, but because Rajin Tech provides extra standoffs, I'm gonna go ahead and install it. Thankfully, I have this standoff screwdriver. It comes so much in handy. I'll go ahead and link it down below along with the other pieces I use inside of this case. Okay, and that particular screw hole or stand is going to be right over here. So I'll just go ahead and screw that into place. You want to make sure you screw it in tightly. If you don't screw it in tightly, if you ever need to take the motherboard out, you run the risk of that standoff still being attached to the motherboard, which is not a huge issue, but it just makes it a little bit more difficult to install the board gonna go ahead and move this cable so it doesn't get in the way okay now I'm going to stand the liquid cooling off to the side of the case and just drop the motherboard maybe not right into place right now but just so that we can get the liquid cooling unit out of the way now we're gonna go ahead and match the rear IO I showed you over here with this over here and then that'll let us match up the screw holes more easily. Okay, so now that everything's lined up, Rajantech includes 17 of these motherboard screws. Just go ahead and screw in the first one, not all the way down, just to keep the board in place. And it comes in handy having a magnetized screwdriver tip. That way you don't have any screws flying around everywhere. Okay, after getting that initial screw in, you can go ahead and screw the rest in tightly and then come back to that original screw and screw that one back in. And then right here is where I just installed that extra standoff onto. This particular motherboard has requires 10 standoffs. Now coming back to the original. All right, so we're all done there. Now let's go ahead and place the liquid cooling unit in the correct spot. 
Many cases will not allow you to do this because of the motherboard, but you'll notice I'm just gonna drop this right into place, right over here, right over the motherboard, just for measuring. And I'm going to put a fan just right here in between the two. Now you'll notice I have plenty of space there for me to put the radiator and the fan before the motherboard even comes into contact with it. So I have some space, so thankfully I can install the radiator on the top of the case. On many other cases, you have to install it towards the front of the case, which sometimes actually provides better temperatures, but regardless, I'm, I, want, I prefer to install it along the top. Now, in case it will not fit along the top, Rajin Tech provides a hole right over here where you can drop your, your radiator just like this and have plenty of space. This case allows you to have a 360, a 280, or 140 millimeter liquid cooling unit. So that's pretty awesome. So again, in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and put it along the top. Course here in a nicer way so that you can see it right up here. Now I'm going to take you down so you can see how we screw it in. All right, so along the top of the case, you'll find this filter up here. This is magnetic and removable, so we'll just go ahead and take it off for now. Okay, and now you'll see a little bit of the holes work that we're going to go ahead and screw in. We're going to go ahead and screw in these screws that came with the liquid cooling unit. They're going to go through the fans into the liquid cooling unit itself. So we're just going to push this back just a little bit in order to fit those fans. And I'm gonna go ahead and put the cable on this side. And then we're also going to put the fans so that they're exhausting air. So actually I'll turn it this way so that it's sucking air from the inside of the case out through the top of the unit. So again, I'm just gonna go ahead lift this out for right now i'm going to drop that in place and i'm going to grab the other fan do the same thing just flip it around have this towards the back just for better cable management okay perfect okay and now you might have to lift it with your fingertips right over here so that this aligns right up here and right down here, as well as here and here. And then also place the radiator. You could see it right up here where that screw is going to align with the radiator. And just screw that lightly into the radiator. Right now that's basically a pilot hole just to keep things in place. Okay, and now we line this fan up as well. Doing the same thing along the top. And now we're just going to repeat the process along all the other fan holes. Okay, now that all are in, we'll just go ahead and tighten all the screws up. All right, now that's installed, let's move on to installing the SSDs. So now to install the SSDs, you'll notice right over here, there's two locations for drives. Just gonna go ahead, push this in and slide one of them out. All right, so this gives you the ability to install either two 3.5 inch drives or two 2.5 inch drives with these little holes right over here, which line up with the holes down here on an SSD. Or you have the ability as well using these same screws, which Rajin Tech provides 12 of to install one SSD right up here. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is install one SSD down here 
and then one SSD up here so that you see how it works. Now, these screws have little rubber grommets to help when you do have a mechanical drive so that you don't hear vibration when you either have it here or down here. So first off, what I'm gonna do on the drive that I'm going to put right up here, I'm just gonna go ahead and screw in, you can do it by hand at first, those screws here. And then just tighten them up a little bit with your screwdriver. You don't need to put extreme force. Okay, so now all you do is these rings, you're gonna go ahead and just push them through here and then slide them down. So you can see right here, plop. Super simple. I really like the, the way they've done that. If I ever wanted to, I can just easily come in here and take it out, just lift. And then here, just pull down a little bit. Then you can plug in your SATA cable and your SATA power cable right here. Or if you want to flip it around, you could as well. And then just plug them in up here. I'm going to go ahead and put them down here just for a little bit easier cable management. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and install the second SATA drive right down here. Okay, just grab the drive, grab the tray. Line up the holes just like that. And then again, we're just going to do it by hand at first. These are a little bit tougher because of the rubber. So once you get in your teeth at least, just go ahead and screw it in lightly and just make sure the ones that are still open line up. And then when you're done there, just simply slide the drive in. You'll hear it click and that's it. You've installed two SSDs or mechanical 3.5 inch drives, whatever you want, you got it there. All right, and now we're gonna go ahead and install the power supply right into here. The case itself has a filter down here. The fan is going to be on the bottom, facing downwards, sucking cool air in and exhausting warm air out. So we're just going to slide it in here. Now, if you have a completely modular power supply, connect all the cables that you're going to need right into here because it's gonna be next to impossible to plug that in or to install that after you've popped in that power supply. Okay, so just go ahead and slide that right into here. Might be a tight fit, but you'll get it in there. All right, so for some power supplies, it looks like you might have to take out this entire tray. So let's go ahead and take that out real quick. Thankfully, that is not riveted down, so it will not be next to impossible. First off, we'll go ahead and unscrew here. And then flip the case on its side. And then we're going to have to unscrew here, 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 and here. Now we'll stand the case back up. And now we can just easily slide this out. And now even more easy, just slide this power supply right into its place. Now, before we go ahead and put that tray back in, we're gonna go ahead and screw the power supply in with these included screws. Just go ahead, line everything up right here. So we have here, 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 and here. All right, and even if you don't have it slid all the way back in, screwing these screws will go ahead and pull the power supply in for you. All 
right, now that that's in place, I'm gonna go ahead and move all these cables out of the way and lay the case down flat after we slide this in. Okay, and then just screw this cage back into place. It might be a tight fit with all those cables there, but we can do it. You see that right there? Might be a very tight fit. Uh, this is an older 1200 watt, which I've had for quite a few years. Never had any issues with it. This case, maybe it's a bit smaller. I'll go ahead and put the, the measurements in there. Okay, so that screws in there. Now we just gotta make sure with this because as you can see, it looks a little bit tilted there, but I think we can just slide everything into place. So we'll just go ahead, lift these cables up, and lay this case flat. Now we may have to go a little bit by eye here, just pushing things into place. All right, so I'm just screwing it in by hand just for right now so that I get the pilot holes. It's going to be easier taking the drive cages out to line things up. All right, so the now that's in place with all the power supply cables there and again this is where a fully modular power supply comes in handy sadly this one is only partially modular but thankfully we've made it work so now i'm just going to go ahead and slide everything back into place i notice now sliding everything in everything is a little bit tighter but as long as it fits don't really care how tight it is <laughs> All right, perfect. So now we are gonna have to do a little cable maneuvering and everything to get it perfect, but we are where we are now, so everything's working. So now at this portion, we're gonna go ahead and go into the cabling of this system. Now, I know that right now we don't have the video card installed yet, but you can tell everything else is there. And actually, I missed a screw up there on the motherboard, but that's okay. I'll take care of that. I've shown you how to do the rest but let's jump into cabling. 